All right, so this is Ask EJ, show foe. <laughs> All right, question number one, let's have it. What's your thoughts, or this is from Colby in Lubbock, Texas. What's your thoughts on backup iron sights for RMRs on a pistol? I'm pondering making a, making a set that is lower than the go-to suppressor sight, height sights, but just tall enough to see, the op, see with the optic. Sort of a similar concept to a lower third co-witness on a rifle, but lower of course and not a co-witness. Thoughts to the idea are for less distraction in the optic window and possibly a better POA or point of interest with the iron. Oh, point of impact. Point of impact, my bad. With the irons as they would closer to a traditional setup sight height. All Thanks right. for all the solid, okay. All right, so. Uh, Colby, is that right? Colby. Uh, that's how I run my gun. So, uh, but you're talking about a sight lower than like the suppressor height. Are you talking about something lower than like the suppressor height of the front sight that you're going to purchase? Do you want something a little bit lower? Because the reason I ask is because I'm going to, on mine, I run the, the true front sight suppressor height and with a uh, delta point uh, I see it in a lower third so I don't I don't know I don't know what the height is but yeah if you're gonna all things being equal yeah I run I run it in the lower third and it works well so yeah your point of aim point of impact uh, you don't have that much of a shift as you would uh, say if you were trying to get a sight that would truly co-witness with the RMR dot. I mean, that would be a pretty pretty tall sight to begin with. So you probably have to get a, like a custom Kydex guy in the garage make you one just for you. But I run the suppressor sight, front suppressor sight. I've got that um, Glock 17 MOS. So I run the Delta Point on there. And I use the Glock front suppressor, front sight, uh, the suppressor height that comes with it, just the factory one. And I see it just fine in the lower third. And then uh, because of the way it, it, the optic mounts on the slide, I use Leopold's uh, rear sight. You know, you have to buy that extra, but the rear sight, and it works good. So, no, no, lower third is good. All right. This next question is from Austin in Yuma, Arizona. Some, but some of my buddies that carry say my gun is a horrible choice for a carry weapon. I have a Smith and Wesson SD9 VE, and I carry it concealed. Are they right? Uh, you know, everybody's going to have their own opinion. If you'd have said I've got a, you know, a really expensive gun, enter name here, somebody's going to disagree with you. Uh, you know that that gun's a very basic model you know some people say it has a sloppy trigger some of the springs have a tendency to break uh, like the trigger reset spring has a tendency to break a lot easier than other said guns uh, but you have a gun so I would turn around and pose a question to you does it work for you does it go bang when you pull the trigger and more importantly, are you carrying it? So, yep. what's his name again? This is Austin. Austin. Austin, Here, here's the thing about the gun community. You, you can only please the people who carry your gun. It seems like in our community, if you carry something different, then there's this whole Ostra, you know, you're ostracized in some regard by, you know, the fanboys of some other gun. And it's almost as if you're, you could actually take the word gun and replace it with wife or girlfriend. I mean, it's how butt hurt some people really get. And you have to wonder, is it your, truly your safety that they're interested in? Uh, or is it, you know, I'm a fanboy of something. And like I've said before, you know, 
the gun that I carry today is called excuse me is called reliable. <clears throat> it happens to be a certain make and model. And when I find a gun that's more reliable than that, and it's proven itself, not only through you know uh, law enforcement or military, but uh, through me actually using it, then I carry something different. So you have to say, you know, my, my answer to you would be this. Do you carry it? And if so, does it go bang for you? And if so, would you trust your life to it? Now, that's not to say that, you know, you could take your gun and say, is there something better? Obviously, there's always going to be something better. And it may not be better in uh, reliability. It may be better in, um, you know, aesthetics. It may just look sexier. That's the biggest problem that I have in our community is that we're so quick to eat our own young. You know, if, if you have a, a, a guy who's new to shooting and, and he buys, you know, an entry level gun or he becomes susceptible to the, you know, the salesman behind the counter and he, you know, he spends his six, $700 on said gun. Then when he goes around with his buddies and he's like, Hey, I got a gun. And they're like, Oh, you got that gun. <sighs> so stupid why'd you buy that piece of crap you should have bought this for the same money you could have got that you could have got this as opposed to hi well that's a way to start let's go shoot that thing and then as you know and then we grow so i mean good on you for 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 having a gun i would tell you that if the gun is not working correctly for you and or you won't carry it and more importantly, and more importantly, you won't trust your life to it. Then, you know, it's time to upgrade. But I'm not going to say your your gun's a piece of crap. There's always going to be something better. But the fact that you have one is what's important. So, yeah, it's a base model, but who cares? I mean, it will it will go bang. I mean, that's what it's designed to do. I don't know how often it's going to go bang, but you may look up and have a really really good one. So, I don't know. I probably digressed a little bit there, but you can, I hope you get what I'm saying. You know. All right, next. Next question comes from Edel in Lay, Florida. I love your old videos about situations. Flow rider. Flow rider. You got to say it like that. You got to say flow rider. Flow rider? You're retarded. Come on, okay. answer this. <laughs> 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 Ask the question. I love your old videos about situations and how to best respond to set our mind to be prepared. Are you going to do more videos like that? He's talking about my Monday mindset. I think so. So the Monday, the, the mindset videos, if I understand you correctly, that'd be my Monday mindset videos. Uh, that's for our shop, our, our um, sheepdog society members. I do that on Mondays. Uh, I'll put the, those videos out for those members. So if you're interested in those, uh, Sheepdog Society's 10 bucks a month. It's like 30 some odd cents a day. You know, you can join that. You can see all those, uh, even all the back episodes. Uh, on Thursdays, we do shop talks. And then I have a bunch of other you know, Sheepdog Society exclusive content that goes into that. Plus every course I've ever done all that content is available uh, with that ten dollar a month membership. So I mean, everything we've got is in there, all, and all the reports and all their stuff. But that's where we—that's where I put the mindset. I know we put some of the stuff out on uh, YouTube, um, some of the, the older stuff. But we've got, you know, it's, that's every Monday, and then shop talks on Thursdays, and then uh, and then we have some radio stuff that's coming for that too. So that's that's what I would tell you. Uh, all right, so let's let's get another one then. Let's just make let's do another one. Okay. Uh, let me see. Um, we've got Adam from Prescott, Arizona. He first wants to say that he loves the podcast. And then, oh, good. Yeah. yeah. And then his question is, what's your recommendation for the best AR-15 for beginners? All right. Uh, so the best AR. 15 for beginners. It's not that I don't have an opinion on that. It's 
it's kind of like they all work the same. Some work better or smoother or you know, less felt recoil or you know, uh, better Gucci gear. The metal is better and that kind of stuff. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of like if you're a beginner, what's your price point? Where, where are you trying to look to get in at? Because you know ARs are like grown men Legos, and you know once you get the AR, then it won't be too long. You're you're either upgrading furniture, you're getting some type of sling for it, uh, and a red dot optic on it. You know you're a, a cool case, more magazines. Uh, you know, and the list just goes on and on, and you can't help yourself. You know, I'm a, I'm a victim of that as well. But if I was looking at like a base model, then I mean, you have several options, and I don't know that like all these options are like true base models, but they're certainly not. You know, your seventeen hundred dollar guns. Um, you could look at like base base would be like a DPMS. Uh, like what a big box store would do. I mean, that that gets you started. Um, you could go with a Smith and Wesson M&P 15. I like the you know the tactical version, but I mean, they got several different versions. Look at the barrel, though. You know, is it one of those pencil thin barrels, uh, or is it you know a standard GI barrel? What's the twist rate on it? And then you know, it kind of comes down to what kind of furniture you want on it as well. So you could go with the, stace, uh, the basic, you know, military style M4 stock. Some of them will have some, you know, Magpul furniture on them and that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, as far as the ergonomics are concerned, the trigger's in the same spot on that base model as it is on the, you know, $1,700, $2,000 cool guy rifles, uh, magazine releases in the same spot, magazines go in the same spot, charging handles still the same. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of like, do you want an AR today? And what's your big, bo what's your big box store got or what's your local gun store got? And how much money you got in your pocket? And, uh, and then you kind of go from there. So, Again, we're talking about a beginner, you know, day one, what is this thing in a box? Um, I, I have a, a DPMS. It hasn't, I haven't been able to break it yet. And I think I've got five or 6,000 rounds through it. And then I let some of my students use it when they're, <laughs> when they're high dollar guns break, <laughs> uh, which is usually always around the trigger. You know, that's just interesting. But nonetheless, the DPMS is good. I like Smith & Wesson M&P 15s. Those tend to be pretty pretty well. Uh, you could get into a, a base model Spikes complete gun. You could, you could go with, uh, well, I mean, goodness, you know, if I don't say one company's name, then everybody would be all butthurt about you didn't say this gun. Every other gun sucks. In my opinion, this is the greatest gun because I own it. But yeah, that's what I look at. If you're going to have an AR, though, you need to learn how to fix it because <laughs> it's going to have some issues eventually, whether they're uh, you know operator induced because you didn't start, you didn't clean it well, you didn't maintain it, you didn't lube it well, uh, or it's just you know your substandard or basic parts. So. Yeah, you'll either gonna want to learn how to fix it and be proactive, or you'll be forced to fix it. At which point you're reactive. So, I mean, I don't really have a. This is the beginner one. I'd have to say, what does your pocketbook look like? I mean, hell, if you never bought an AR before and you walk out and you got three grand in your pocket, you may buy a badass rifle and then a whole bunch of other stuff with it too. So. I think when you say beginner, it's like beginner in knowledge, really. And then your pocketbook determines which AR you get into. I hope that answers the question. So, that's what we got. Uh, 
he's the one that said he liked the podcast. Yeah. Good. I'm glad you like it. So we got some more show. We got another show coming out this week. So a new one uh, called Scared of Fear. I think you'll like that one. Uh, let's see. Oh, so going back to the whole sheepdog thing. It's uh, sheepdogsociety.org. You know, it's 10 bucks a month, and you can get everything we've ever produced, all the back issues and all other stuff, to your heart's content. And then, you know, Mondays is the Monday Mindset, Thursdays is the Shop Talk, and then, uh, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff, too. And access to every course that I've ever put out. So don't forget to check that out. All right. We got three, right? Yep. Okay, cool. All right. Well, as always, stay alert and practice often. We'll see you next time.